readings of love in the precious name of Jesus. I do count it of, I should say, from Waterworks Mennonite Fellowship. I count it a privilege to worship here at Myerstown with you dear folks who mean so much to us. Thank you, Zach, for the exhortation not to stand gazing and be about the Father's business. And Joyce, I think I heard him say that he would pull your weeds in the garden this year, just lest I forget. Every parent's dream to have your... I heard the question posed once, do you know the two theories about arguing with women? And I was like all in. I, you know, I like things boiled down. A, B, simplified life. I'm all ears. The person said, it's no use I tell you because neither works. That's not fair, right? That's totally unfair. The same could be, that could be in reverse about men. Maybe the key word is arguing. There's a big difference between arguing and discussing different ideas. Well, this morning, what I'd like to do is I'd like to share a message that it's a title that was given to me earlier this year at a, a marriage seminar. And the title is Conflict and Communication. Now, I, the more I pondered this subject, it applies to every relationship that you have. So although it may have a little bit of a tailor towards marriage, it's not necessarily a subject that is confined in marriage. Every one of us are created to be relational beings. So whether you know it or not, your greatest fulfillment is in relationship. And that goes to everyone, every introvert, as well as every extrovert. Now, introverts like their solitude time or away time or downtime, away from people time, maybe a little more than, the, than the, some, of, some of the extroverts do. But be it known, we were made in the image of God, and God is a very relational God. So you, at the core of you, are created for relationship. And your greatest fulfillment is found in relationship. So I'd like to discuss the subject of conflict and communication. So I think I'm going to maybe first talk a little bit about, about communication and then conflict. One author said it something like this, marriage is very complex. Two unique individuals make a lifelong commitment. Each of them has an elaborate inner world of thoughts and feelings and goals and dreams, values and opinions, wounds and sensitivities, not to mention a few million needs. So these two start a relationship and they hope to make a combined life, marriage, significantly more satisfying, meaningful, exciting, fun, full, and loving than they could individually. So they have the big day and make the lifelong commitment to do just that. They move in with each other and bring all their accumulated stuff along with their two million separate thoughts, Feelings, goals, dreams, values, opinions, wounds, sensitivities, and needs. And she brings the same. And there'll be 
one flesh. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, they will. But not without a bit of banging and clanging and crying and talking and sharing and merging and blending. In other words, communication and conflict is a, a huge part of, of, of developing that oneness in marriage. I remember so vividly working for a couple that lived in Lebanon. To be precise, they were 87 years old. And I'm, I'm grateful for, for the, the Bible. I'm grateful for the many books. I'm grateful for seminars. I'm grateful for examples that, that Joyce and I have been privileged to uh, observe and read and so on. But I don't know. This 87-year-old couple just gets, gets a lot of credit because they, they left an impression on me. They were both extremely hard of hearing, okay? And I had the privilege of working in the next room for a day and a half. Should have taken me only a day. But I, the, the hard of hearing equals they talk loud. And they would talk. I just, I heard them talk for a day and a half. I mean, it wasn't nonstop chatter, but close. And they, apparently high school sweethearts, so they, in my day and a half in their home, I heard them walk through their high school years, their pre-marriage years, their marriage years, their raising their family years, and so on. And it, it, was, it was just fascinating. I just, I was... I was in awe. I remember one time it got totally quiet. And I'm getting some work done. Suddenly he pipes up, Honey, let's buy a camper. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is going to really get good because he had health issues. And I was kind of worried <laughs> for him just getting up and walking to the next room. And, and I thought, I want, inwardly I thought, I wonder how she's going to handle this. Is she going to, shoot it right down to reality, or is she going to let him dream? She left the guy dream. And he was out west with his camper, and he was here and there, and she was kind of, yeah, that'd be great. And then ever so gently, she brought this 87-year-old visionary back to reality. And I thought, wow, I just got a front row seat to incredible communication and conflict. They say, in real estate, the three words are location, location, location. In relationship, it is communication, communication, communication. Communication is what blood is to life. You take away communication, and this is why it's broad, much broader than marriage. Everyone's in relationship, somehow. You take away communication, you take away relationship. It's that simple. And you could, take, you could transfer this right into relation, your relationship with, with the Lord. So communication and conflict. So what I'd like to do is just have a few thoughts on communication. First of all, I'd like to just briefly discuss the basics of communication. I like the definition of communication. I like this definition of communication. Understanding and being understood. And it does, it, it's, it's more than words. Words are a huge part of communication, but words don't always bring understanding. The idea to have in common. It's the idea of that one flesh. And that's what we long for, and I already said that. And that is a deep human yearning. That's not a male thing. That's not a female thing. That's a human thing. Communication. And the desire to be understood intensifies with stress, 
disagreement and distance. One word would describe the absence of being understood. One word. Lonely. And there's a lot of lonely people in the world because they're not understood. They're not in relationship. And there are many bad effects that spring from loneliness. There's misunderstandings, there's accusations, and so on. Job 31, 35, I should have put this on a slide. Job says, if you're jotting notes down, Job 31, 35, he says, oh, that somebody would hear me. You know what he's saying? I want to be understood. All these words, nobody understands me. And on the flip side of that, to balance, there are times, there are periods that we go through that I think no one understands. And I think God brings us to those, through those valleys that nobody really understands so that we deep, it's often meant to refine us and deepen our trust in God. Secondly, uh, communication is a transmitting of ideas or thoughts. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen this diagram. It's not original with me. Uh, I found it online, and I thought it kind of uh, portrays what I'm trying to say. But communication is simply, communication is actually amazing if you really study it and analyze it. So you got an idea, and actually I just heard it in Sunday school. Uh, Brother Nate, I'm pecking on him. He started talking, he said, well, I'm not sure how to put this into words. That's exactly what I'm thinking about when I'm thinking of communication. And we know exactly what, what he was talking about. You, you have an idea, but how do you get that idea in the other person's mind? So what you have to do is you take the idea and you encode it, okay? And we use words to encode the idea. So you got words that are spoken and then heard, and then the other person has to decode what was encoded, and hopefully you got the same idea in this mind and that mind. And that's communication. Well, some ideas are really easy to put into words. Some are not. Some ideas are very difficult. You know, like we talk, and then we backtrack, and we say, no, that's not quite what I meant. And, well... This is, this is kind of a, a reality for, for Joyce and I. We were in Grenada in uh, December of last year preparing for a marriage seminar, okay? We were going to talk about marriage and talk about uh, several sessions, and one of the sessions was on, on communication. And uh, so we're, we're, put it, we're setting up the tables in the basement of the Laura Church. And, you know, I had an idea, and she had an idea, and there was two other people there that had, had ideas. And you try to put it into words how it's going to look. And just, No, no, no. It's finally like, grab the table like this and grab another table like this. And, yeah. and it's just, you've ever been there? Sometimes you try to sketch out. You know, you, you, you're not communicating. You're not getting the idea from this mind to this mind. So you take a, a here, give me a piece of paper. And you just take a sketch and, all that is part of communication. And then in that illustration, and in reality, in the middle, there's noise. And sometimes it's physic, real literal noise. Maybe it's just a lack of hearing or whatever. And that can be expanded and, and, and broadened. Noise can come in so many different different forms, but the whole idea, I mean, the, what I'm trying to say is communication is kind of complex to get the right idea from this mind to this mind, whatever relationship we're in. And misunderstandings happen, and sometimes we're saying one thing and another thing is heard, just kind of like what Zach said, you know, I kind of portrayed it. It was a joke. But that can happen in reality. Uh... That's not what I meant. That's not what I said. But sometimes what is said and what is heard is so different. And just to understand that, I remember 
recently meeting with someone, and I had a clear, I, I had an agenda. I, I had, there were some things that had to be communicated. And after the meeting, actually, I, I, I like this idea. If it's really important, and, and, and husbands and wives, what, when, sometimes when you sit down and talk, it's, it's very healthy. If, if you have something to say, now, at the very end of the meeting or discourse, now, what did you hear me say? And it was very interesting in this specific meeting I was in to have repeated back to me exactly what was trying to be said. And it was 90% right, but just to clarify exactly what was uh, coded, I mean, encoded and decoded. Well, and another poor point of uh, the basics of communication is uh, statistics are going to vary on this. Uh, uh, wherever resources are going to vary on this. I like this one. I've heard it various ways, but in communication, words are about 10% of communication. You can communicate so much without a word. Body language is about 20%, and tone carries about 70%. Now, that can be argued, but that is only there to say that words are a very small part of communication. And that is precisely why sometimes you must have a face-to-face -face meeting with some, someone. Because it can be so misunderstood if it's just words. I walk in the door. My wife says, could you please fix the faucet that's been leaking for a week? And I say, okay. And I say, okay. <laughs> Same word. Totally different meeting. Or, Heard, totally different thing heard, I should say. So, a few scriptures. Just allow these scriptures to wash through your mind in the, in the subject of communication. James says, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. I'm sorry, yeah, slow to speak and slow to wrath. I call that, I wrote in my Bible, that's the important speed checks. Because we get them so backwards. And why? Maybe you're different than I am, but I get them so backwards. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Sometime, some, for some reason, we tend to get upset quick, talk quick, and slow to listen. Maybe I'll just point out a few rather than read this entire passage. It says, put away lying, speak every man the truth with his neighbor. For we're members one of another, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. At the end it says, be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. I'm talking about key principles of communication. Be swift to hear, slow to speak. Speak the truth, brothers, sisters. You will never develop meaningful relationships without absolute honesty. Will never happen. And that's why it says, speak every man the truth. Be angry and sin not. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer every man. To everything there's a season and a time and a purpose under the heaven, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. There's a time to talk and there's a time not to talk. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman and knows the difference. Some of us are still in kindergarten, right? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Just let, let that one sink in. Do you want to be an instrument of death or an instrument of life? Words of life, words of death are right in the tongue. We're talking about communication. 
Job says, how long will you vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? Some of us remember a little chant that went, sticks and stones can hurt my bones, but words can never harm me. That's a lie. You know that. If you heard Schaeferstown uh, choir sing, you got a, uh, a, got a nice song about sticks and stones. Words are like swords. Proverbs 12 says words are like swords. Very, very important. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. So there's some, uh, some scriptures on communication. The, the third point that I'd like to just, sh- what I'd like to share is the levels of communication. You know that, and, and this is just, this is right. Uh, don't expect to have a deep level of communication with everyone you know. It's just that way. You're going to have different levels of communication as per your relationship, as per the depth of your relationship. And that's, that's okay. Even Jesus had an inner circle. So, but I think it's important to understand this because I'm afraid that some expect a real deep relationship without a real deep level of communication. I'll try to uh, illustrate that a little bit. So first of all, we have small talk and surface. I mean, tomorrow morning I'm leaving at 5 a.m., okay? Just real cloudy day or whatever, just small talk. That's the level that you can pretty much communicate with anybody on. That's just normal. We could... You could develop these points, and I'm going to go through them quickly. Uh, the second one is just facts. So you can talk about, hey, what happened? There was an accident in Myerstown. Did, did you hear this? Did you see this? Did you, did you hear? You know, just things that happen. They're, they're facts. The third level of com- communication involves opinions, ideas, and decisions. In other words... This is the level that you make yourself a bit more vulnerable. You're not very vulnerable when you say, I'm leaving at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Well, maybe if there's a different different idea on the other other side, you do make yourself vulnerable. But when you just talk about some things that happen, you're not very vulnerable. You're not exposing yourself or your belief or your opinion. Uh, on the third level of communication is when you're willing to say, I have an opinion about that. I mean, I, I'd love to illustrate this with uh, some of the things that happened in 2020. <laughs> you know, big news of 2020. You probably forgot about COVID, right? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? When you, when you are willing to talk about an opinion or an idea, you're getting a little bit deeper and you're getting more vulnerable. And then you go one level deeper and you're ready to put some emotion into that. I'm going to stand behind why. I mean, I'm not a, I don't spend a lot of time on social media, but every time I see some things on social media, you, you can almost feel some things, right? Or even in any kind of art. Whoa, they're really going beyond their idea and opinion to some feeling, emotion. You're, 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 getting, you're getting deeper. And so the deeper you go, the more wisdom is required. And you finally get to the bottom line of relationship and the bottom line of communication and you're at your belief system and you're even talking about what I need to make me tick or whatever. This is who I am and it's built on my deep belief system. Uh, It's the very core of, of who we are. And to illustrate this, back up with me to the book of Judges 
And I'm not going to take time to turn there, but if you want to take notes, Judges is at 16, 17, you got, or 15, 14, 15, 16, you got the story of Samson. <laughs> Fascinating. I was out in Cherry Creek in November, and I, I, I get a rare privilege to teach Sunday school. And I traveled with Claire, with, uh, Claire Long, and Claire Long was, uh, shared the message, and I got to teach Sunday school. And I was teaching on Samson. And I remember thinking this story through on Samson, and that's quite a story. I just kind of surfaced that, and I still don't know if I got to the depth of it, but something clicked. Samson, you know the story. Delilah, oh, she's quite a lady. Samson, you really love me. You're gonna tell, you don't love me. You didn't tell me the truth. I say, you know what's going on? What level of relationship were they on? And this is tragic when people expect the number five relationship with a number one or two reality of life. And that's exactly precisely what Delilah and Samson had. And finally, after her nagging, and you don't love me, and you, come on, Samson, they're going to laugh. I can almost picture Samson just leaning into the conversation, and he said, in fact, it says, he told her all that was in her, his heart. And the very next verse, Delilah, it says, Delilah knew that Samson had just got done telling her all that was in his heart. He got down to number five in levels of relationship. And it wasn't safe. And it costs deeply. Blessed is the relationship where there's absolute trust. Absolute trust. And th this applies far beyond marriage, but it, that's where it really, really hits home. And that's maybe if this is tailored towards marriage. There has to be absolute trust in relationship. And you get right down there to number five, all the way to the bottom of your heart, and she's at the bottom of her heart, and you can just communicate, and you're, here's, here's who I am, here's what makes me who I am because of what I solidly believe, and here is my needs, and I understand your needs, and I'm telling you, that is where you have the deepest sense of fulfillment. That, now we're talking about one flesh. And that's what every one of us as married couples, must strive for. And everyone, like I said, is in a relationship. If you want a deep, fulfilled, meaningful relationship, you get to the bottom line core of trust. Let's move on and have a few comments on healthy communication. So we looked at some scriptures of communication, some basics of communication, the levels of communication, and let's just, uh, let's just clarify a few uh, important parts of healthy communication. Number one, respect. There, it's, let me say it like this. You'll never have a deep, meaningful relationship unless there's mutual respect. And that's, that's treating each other like adults. It's, it's unfortunate when there's a relationship that one is not treating the other like an adult. Respect. I remember hearing the story of a teacher, first day of school. She, got, she brought her, engaged all her students, and she said, okay, we're going to write rules down on the board for the year. You're going to make them. They were all in. I mean, no, no talking without raising your hand. Coming from students. Uh, no doing this, no doing that, no doing that. And they compiled about 10 from the student body. And the teacher says, wonderful, let's do it. But then she said, I could make one word to umbrella everything you just said. And it was respect. I'm telling you, respect goes a long way in communication. Secondly, listen well. Uh, just like we talked about levels of communication, we could develop uh, levels of listening. You know that there are levels of listening. The... The lowest level of listening is ignore. Have you ever talked and somebody's totally, I mean, you're talking, you're trying to communicate, somebody's just ignoring you. They're not, you know they're not listening. Or then there's a pretense. Yeah, 
Yeah, how was that again? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait, I'm guilty. Probably you are probably too. Okay? Levels of listening. Uh, selective listening. So I'll hear what I want to hear. And then there's attentive listening. I mean, phones down, books down, newspapers down, I'm listening. And then there's one more yet, and it's empathetic listening. Like you are feeling with the person that is talking. And the person that is talking is saying, I'm really bothered about this. This is something I'm really concerned about. And you're entering into, even if the person is wrong or right, you're entering into it because there is some emotion there and you want to latch into it. Maybe if it's not correct, you want to carefully bring truth into the situation. But you know what I mean? And if you want to solve problems, if you want to solve conflicts in communication, you're going to listen empathetically and you're going to be all ears all in and you we can feel the level of listening if you're like me shame on me because I know I'm not a good listener it's an area that probably most of us needs to grow in respect listen well and appreciation, this is healthy communication will always express appreciation and blessing. As it first Peter says, in but contrary wise, not don't render evil for evil, but contrary wise, blessing. When when you are blessing someone, and I'm not talking about flattering or gushing over someone, just I'm blessed by this, I'm blessed by that. This, we're talking about healthy communication, respect, listening, expressing appreciation and blessing. Uh, I already said this. Some of these are kind of redundant, but honesty and transparency is so important in healthy communication. It is imperative for a good relation. I guess I can be totally honest, right? Uh, you think? Joyce and I have had a perfect marriage? Absolutely not. We've had our days. We've had stalemate days. You don't know what I'm talking about, right? You just don't talk for a day or two. or just very minimal talking. And, and sometimes we, we have our routine time of talking every day. And is everything okay? Yeah. Are you being honest? Honesty and transparency. Sometimes it takes me a day to be honest. You don't, know, you don't know anything about that, right? And keep it constant is that we're talking about healthy communication, respect, listening, appreciation, honesty, and, and just keep it constant. And I don't know what that looks like to you, but for us, it, we must do it regularly. We just simply must. Now, there are every, there's going to be interruptions to your schedule, but... For us, it works out to have a cup of coffee every morning. And if that gets interrupted, it does often. We, but when it does, it's just something missing. We've got to have a cup of coffee. And then often, we'll, if, if the evening's open, we'll sit down and have a little chat and try our very best to go to bed at the same time. Constant communication. It is so, so, so important. And I just want to encourage everyone to make a goal of that. And I know schedules can be so hard, so don't, uh, don't ever try to take somebody else's schedule and say, okay, I'm going to adopt. Everybody has to make it personal, but it, it, it's an awesome time where you just sit down and we're going to get into conflict in the last portion of this message. And when there is conflict, that's the time to deal with it. Not the time when you go, Ugh! Most of us in deal, we embrace the conflict right in the middle of the heat of the emotion, and it goes, it doesn't go well. Usually it doesn't go well. Keep it constant. Uh, a few mistakes in communication. I'm going to go through these really quickly. Re raising voice. Never, never, never raise your voice unless they can't hear you. Raising voice is just damaging, period. And most of us are guilty, right? Disrespect. Speaking down. This is kind of like the converse of healthy communication, but like a parent to a child. That happens in adult, that happens in adult communication, and it shouldn't. Disrespect will never, 
or speaking down will never work. Assumptions. Pretending you know what the other person thinking. Just kind of, you know, kind of like finishing the sentence and uh, uh, assumptions and, and, and interruptions. Not allowing the person to finish. I should have put a little picture up on, on here, but to il il it's, it's kind of, it's, it's funny. I remember Joyce and I, Joyce found it and she showed it to me. We just had a good laugh. The, there's an old couple sitting on the sofa with a, maybe a granddaughter in the background. And this old, probably 87-year-old couple, uh, they, she pipes up, well, we all got to go. So the point is, who's going first? She says, well, he says, well, I'll probably go first. Well, if you go first, don't dilly-dally around. Just go. And then the granddaughter's stepping into this conversation. And, and, uh, and don't be a baby when you go either. Just be a man. Finally, the granddaughter couldn't handle it anymore. She steps in and she says, uh, excuse me, but how can you talk so uh, haphazardly about dying? They both look back and say, who ever said anything about dying? We're talking about going to the dentist. <laughs> That's funny. But how many times have you done that or have I done that in communication where you're making assumptions and interrupting, and you're just off the wall. Back to James, slow to speak, swift to hear. Mistakes, sarcasm. Yeah, you're always right, okay? You're such a good person. You know, it sounds good, but, but the tone says it all. Well, your family is just perfect. <laughs> sarcasm. Don't ever do it. And here's, here's probably the biggest one, criticism. Attacking the person and not the problem. You always, you never, you, you. Oh, whenever we, you, and not, here's the problem. There's a huge difference. Mistakes in communication. We're going to switch gears and the last few thoughts are going to be on conflict. If there's anything that I want you to really get this morning, here it is. And maybe that's not big enough font for you to see. Conflict is normal and natural. And conflict can be the door to a deeper relationship. And I'm telling you, it took, we're still in kindergarten in our marriage relationship, I think. But it took us a lot, many years to realize that the, the, the more honest we can deal with conflict, the deeper and more fulfilling a relationship can be. Conflict is normal and natural. In fact, if you have no conflict, no two ideas, why, why do we need each other? Why do you need any relationship? If you're willing to spend time with somebody that has a different idea. It can be the door to a deeper relationship and deeper intimacy if handled correctly, and it takes both. But many I say many do not go through the door. Fearful of opposing opinions. Remember the levels? Level one, level two, it's all safe. Level three, ooh, that takes, that takes some grace. That takes understanding. Level four, level five. I remember in uh, Grenada, or one of my first years in Grenada, Olive Branch sent a, a key speaker down to have a staff retreat. And the subject was relationships. And I still remember some very valuable input from that seminar on relationships. But he emphatically said, he said this, that it was just a new thought to me, but it took me a couple years. That's probably 20 plus, 25 years since he said it. And I agree with him wholeheartedly. He said, if there's no conflict... Someone is not being honest. That jerked me. Really? And maybe it's how you... If you think of conflict as two people heatedly arguing, well that's, 
Conflict is simply a different, a different opinion. That's conflict. Another idea, if you will. In a good marriage, there must be two authentic partners. Authenticity involves full and free expressions of each other's true self with all their uniqueness. And when this happens, there is bound to be some conflict. Walter Trobisch wrote a book on marriage. He was a missionary in Africa. And I, I really wonder, some people say and write things that I, I, I have already thought, I wonder if you really do what you're writing. He said, when a couple comes to me for, to get married, question number one. Oh, good. Sit down. Let's have a talk. Question number one. When was your last disagreement? Tell me about it. Some look at each other and say, we didn't really have a disagreement yet. They say, okay, good. Uh, you're, you're dismissed. Come back when you have one and then we'll talk. I really wonder, do you really do that? You get his point? His point was, they're not really being honest with each other if they've never had a conflict or a disagreement about opinions and, and ideas. And that was in interesting to me. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about styles in dealing with conflict. There are basically three. You could probably fit a few more in, in, in this... Uh, outline, but there's the, the confrontational type. Another idea comes, and I stand here, and I talk, and it's all out. In fact, I have so much appreciation for the Grenadian culture. I love Grenada. I love Grenadians. I love the way they talk and think. They are this type. <laughs> Ain't hiding nothing. I mean, it's. I remember, I remember one person. Said, no, I'm not speaking to him. I'm not speaking to him. In other words, I'm not in speaking terms with him at all. We usually don't say that. We just live it out, right? Confrontational is is one style of conflict. The second style of conflict is. Another idea comes, and you don't get all emotional about it. You don't get mad. You don't get defensive. You don't get critical. You get, you just, oh, let's talk. Let's, let's just chat about this. Let's have a conversation. I appreciate your ideas. And even if they are so wrong, you don't have to be so bam, bam. You get, okay, let's calm discussion. Oh, I long to be there and just live, live there. There's another, and that's where you avoid it. I don't do conflict, nope. Another idea, it could get messy. And I know this takes a lot of wisdom, uh, how to embrace it and so on, but that's basically the three styles. Now I'd really be curious, I'd really, really be curious, and, and I'd love to do a poll, but I won't. But in your heart, choose one, who are you? What's your, what's your go-to method? I'm tempted to do a raise of hands. But just think that through. Have a little discussion with somebody that you're in a relationship with. Okay? Hindrances in dealing with conflict. There is... Uh, I don't know if any of you read... John Gottman's book on relationship. It, it is so fascinating. I forget the title of it. But in his book, he talks about relationships, four horsemen of the apocalypse. Okay? Now, just think that through a little bit. You think of, you, to, at first, it's like, whatever. The four horsemen of the, uh, no, I'm sorry, relationships, four horsemen of the apocalypse. Well, if you know what apocalypse means, it's the end, okay? You often talk about the revelation. So what he's saying is, here are four horses that the end of a relationship comes on. Okay? And then he kind of spends a chapter or so in each one, and I'm just going to give them to you. The first one is the critical. Whenever a person has this style of dealing with conflict, it's headed towards an apocalypse. Just 
Because you can only deal with criticism so, so, so long. And, you know, in some ways we say, well, that's not really the end. But I am so convinced that there are many, many relationships that are in survival mode. And they're not thriving. And they're not entering into the deep level of relationship. And some of these may or may not help you to understand what all is happening in, in a relationship. Then you got the defensive person. Uh, I already said about the critical. The critic, the critic attacks the person, not the problem. Attacking character with a sword. Never do that. Attack the problem. Defensive. That's when you just, when you just, uh, uh, you attempt to defend. You say, oh, here they come again. Here they come again with words. Oh. And you put up this and it all happens inside of here. You may not even know what is all, all going on, but you're, you're so defensive. Like, and, and sometimes these defensive people can, can whine like an innocent child. And it's probably not the whole picture, but the answer is to try to hear exactly how they feel and take the level of responsibility. If you sense in a relationship... Uh, re, re, defensiveness, there, there must be some work on it. If you sense criticism, you must, uh, there, there's some work on it. Contempt, we're still on Gottman's four horsemen of relationship. So you have the contempt, and that's the person that's speaking down, the uh, superiority, mocking, rolling eyes, sneering in disgust. Contempt, listen, contempt is so serious. Contempt causes such deep wounds. Every, I'm guessing every one of us can remember as a child facing contempt, where we were mocked. And it destroys all funness and admiration. Rather, the converse is, is building up, making the person feel valuable, uh, even in, in being honest about your, your needs. And then the last one is just stonewalling. And that's when the, when the listener withdraws. And sometimes it's literal. Sometimes a person just leaves the room. Gone. Shut the door. Sometimes they leave, but they're still there. And the stonewaller is just simply not interested. Sometimes overwhelmed, sometimes to calm down. Maybe it's just to avoid a blow up and so on. But uh, it doesn't. It actually doesn't work to hound a stonewaller. If, some, if somebody stonewalls, if they check out, you got a job to do. And it doesn't say, you got to talk, you got to. There's, there's, a, there's a, a need to honestly engage the person so they don't want to check out. Those are, real quickly, the four horsemen of the uh, uh, relationships, four horsemen of the apocalypse. And this is pretty much the, the last slide that I have is skills in resolving conflict identify, I'm sorry, identify the source of conflict, who or what. In other words, I'd love to unpack a scenario. I'd love to somebody to come up front, tell me a conflict that you recently had, and we'll, we'll uh, unpack it. Uh, none of, we don't want to be that vulnerable, so I'll just tell you one that I heard, okay? So I heard of a conflict where the, this was a, a newly married couple where, and I don't know them, by the way, I heard it, so, and the about six months in, it didn't. It wasn't real pretty, because he, they both were working, both working hard, about the same amount of hours. But she did all the domestic work, and he just was on his recliner and doing his thing, and and it just developed. And it just didn't feel good to her. And so, actually, let me let me just put all these on the board. Then we'll go through it. So identify the source of conflict, choose a time and place to discuss the source, begin with a blessing, discuss the issue, honestly express your feelings and emotion, allow for dialogue, ask re clarifying questions, restate what you hear, empathize, and validate fe feelings. And then conclude with a, a agree on your need. So if she's really upset about this, probably the worst thing she could do is right in the middle of it, and she's washing the dishes, and he's sprawled out on the sofa and doing his thing. He, the worst thing she could do is say, I'm sick and tired of this. Here I am again. You always, you. <laughs> okay. 
won't work. Let's say they do have a time to talk. I'm going to choose a time and a place where I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to tell him how it feels. So they do. And they be, she begins with a blessing. She says, I'm so thankful that you work hard. And you, actually, you're one of the best, whatever he does. And, and then you get right to the issue. Discuss. But you know, honey, it's just not going so well. And I really am struggling, and I don't like the struggle that's going on. And that's where you just need to discuss the issue and just be honest with your. You gotta be honest. That's, it's hard to be brutally honest. Their relationship hinges on honesty. Some people say, "Oh, just for lack of words, suck it up. Just be." You know, I, I'm not convinced the relationship is gonna thrive if. She is never honest. And again, this is, it must be handled very delicately, must carefully. Allow for dialogue. Ask clarifying questions. When, when the person says something, make sure you heard what you hear is what is really meant. So what I, uh, here's, a good, here's a good word. When, when you're not trying to understand something and it's coming to you, well, help me understand how you feel that way. Maybe he says, well, I work a whole lot harder than you. I work, you're just sitting in the office. Or, well, okay, H help me understand. And sometimes to get the person to uh, clarify the, the words is maybe is convicting itself. And actually, when you can empathize and invalidate their feelings, blessed is that man if he says, I understand how you feel. I get it. Maybe he thinks he's right. But whenever you, you do honestly feel that way. And sometimes when somebody, something comes, and that, that is so wrong. That is so dumb. But that person, whatever relationship is, they actually feel that way. They usually don't drum up stuff and say, here's how I feel about it. And if you care, you're careful and just, Validate it, and you'll be able to speak truth and bring truth into the matter a whole lot easier. And then simply conclude on a plan. In this situation, whatever she wants, I mean, hey, two nights a week, you do it, buddy. <laughs> and then okay, Tuesday and Thursday, next week, Tuesday, he doesn't do it again. Oh, boy, here we go. Back next meeting. <laughs> so, And it would be fun to put other scenarios in there, but... Uh, if you didn't hear anything else in this message, I hope you heard one thing. Conflict is normal. Conflict is the door to deeper relationships. Conflict involves communication. And blessed is the man and blessed is the woman who, who learns to deal with conflict well. I did have one more slide. And that is conflict even in the Song of Solomon. Read the Song of Solomon for yourself sometime and you will discover that there's conflict in there. There is chapter 5, okay? Chapter 5 didn't go well. Some people think it's a dream. I think it's more than a dream. It didn't go well at all. But chapter 6 and 7 get really, really, really good. So they had some kind of conflict management uh, skills and conflict resolution in place because you have mature love a deep love in chapter 8 to the point of many waters cannot quench love and there's more nuggets of truth, but conflict is normal. So I trust that that is a blessing to you in your relationships. Those of you that are married, apply it in marriage. Those of you that are not married, the truth of relationships still exists because we're all created for it, to be honest in our relationships and handling conflict well. God bless you. It has been a joy to worship together around the word again. And let's all stand for a closing dismissal prayer. And after the prayer, if you could have a chorus of song or a song. Loving Father, thank you so much that you are the perfect communicator. You are absolutely perfect in relationship. And you have handled conflict so perfectly. And Father, here we are. We're asking to be just like you. We know we're human. We know we're created for relationship. 
We know we communicate. We know we have conflict. And we're asking, Lord, will you simply help us to develop deeper relationships and be more Christ-like? Bless us as we go. Make us effective in what we do for Jesus' sake. And in his name we pray. Amen.